Before we begin with the actual pattern, I do want to show you how to go ahead and change the, the color of the yarn because for the sample that I'm working for this tutorial, I will not be cha changing um, the colors. As you can see here from this here, it's a lot of um, tail ends and that makes it difficult for me to record it all and I think it makes it much more slower. So um, I will show you how to, to change yarn, but like I said, if you do want to change your yarn for, you, for the pattern, you'll have to do it on as you go along because for my sample, I won't be changing yarn. But anyway, here goes. So here, you'll always change yarn at a double, the next double crochet. So let me just show you. So here I'm working my next stitch and here it goes and I'll yarn over, go through my two. Then before yarning over again, I'll take my next um, color and I'll bring it through and I'll yarn it through my two loops on the hook. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue with this color. So that's how you would change your yarn. Let me show you again. Okay, so here goes. I'll work my stitch. This is the last stitch before I change. So here it is. Here's yarning over. Go through two loops on the hook. And with two loops on the hook, I'll bring in my next color. Get it onto my hook and pull it through. So I've completed the double crochet, the last two loops on the hook with the different color. And then I'll continue on with this color. So that's how you would change the colors of your yarn. Um, you would then cut off the, the color that you've stopped using. And well, I. I know that you can weave in these ends as you work your stitches, but I personally, my, I just prefer not doing that because I feel like after every two washes or so, I have the end sticking out. So I rather just take um, a yarn needle. I know it's a lot of work, but I just prefer it. I'll take the yarn needle and I'll thread it through and I'll sort of lose lose the tail by going back and forth that's what i prefer doing but the choice is yours just as long as you do know how to change your colors we'll begin with the neckline and that's the ribbing that sits around the neckline so you'll form a slip knot using the smaller of the two hooks in my case it's a five millimeter hook chain five one, two, three, four, five. Round one into the second chain from the hook single crochet. So here's my first chain and that's my second. Into that second chain, insert the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two loops on the hook. And you'll continue with single crochets to the end of the round. After every round, make certain that you have four stitches. One, two, three, four. Round two, chain one and turn. Chain one counts as a turning chain and not a stitch. Into that first stitch, you'll single crochet. Actually, you'll single crochet into all stitches, but you'll work your stitches into the back loops only. So here's a front loop and that's the back loop into that back loop single crochet continue with single crochets into the back loops only to the end of the round so i've continued on with the rubbing and at this point i know that the rubbing is right because when i 
fold the two ends over around my head it fits around the head now when you're fitting the ribbing you don't want to stretch the ribbing neither do you want it to hang loosely around the head it must just fit comfortably like so without stretching it around the head now we need to join both ends of the ribbing together so to do that we're going to slip stitch across so I'm picking up a stitch on one side of the rubbing and then I'm picking up a stitch on the other side so here on one side of the ribbing, I'm picking up a stitch and on the other side and then I'm yarning over and pulling through and going through the loop on the hook. joins the ribbing together so round one of the yoke we will now change our hook to a six millimeter hook then it's chain one and here I'm working single crochets all along this edge of the ribbing so to work those single crochets, I'll work them into these little gaps that I see on the top edge of the ribbing. Now for every, here's a, the ridges, the raised part of the ribbing, and here's the lowered part of the ribbing. So in between those lowered parts, I should have two gaps. Here's one and here's the other. So here's the raised part and here's the raised part and here's the gap sorry the lowered part of the ribbing and in between those i should have two gaps one two into those gaps i'll work single crochets so into that first gap i'll work a single crochet into that next one i'll work and i'll continue on working single crochets into all the gaps along this edge of the rubbing. I've continued on and I've worked those single crochets all around the neckline. So to complete the round, it's into that chain one slip stitch to join round two turn chain two one two so now round two is an increase round and here we'll be working double crochet a double crochet followed by an increase so it's a double crochet increase double crochet increase and so on to work a double crochet it's yarn over insert the hook into that stitch pull up a loop yarn over go through two loops on the hook yarn over go through two loops on the hook so i've worked the double crochet and then it's followed by an increase an increase is working two stitches into one so into the next stitch i'll work two double crochets so here goes my first double crochet and then it's the second and that was an increase so i'll continue on throughout the round with the double crochet into one stitch and an increase into the next stitch so it's a double crochet and i'm alternating with an increase and you continue on to the end of the round I'm at the end of round two and I've worked that double crochet increase 
and here I am right at the end so you can see here here it is so into that to end the round it's into the second chain from chain two slip stitch to join round three turn chain two one two so here I'm working double crochets into all stitches Continue with double crochets to the end of the round. I'm at the end of round two and I've worked that double crochet increase. And here I am right at the end. So you can see here, here it is. So into that to end the round, it's into the second chain from chain two, slip stitch to join. Round three, turn, chain two, one, two. So here I'm working double crochets into all stitches. Continue with double crochets to the end of the round. I've come to the end of round three and I've worked those double crochets all around. So to end the round, it's into the second chain from chain two, slip stitch to join. Round four, turn, chain two, one, two. Now here we're working the puff stitch. It's actually the slanted puff and the double crochet that we worked before that puff stitch enables the puff stitch to slant. Now for our first puff, even though we're working on this side of the yoke, it's just for that first puff we'll work it behind our chain two. So into that stitch behind chain two, we'll work our first puff. And to work a puff, it's yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, elongate that loop to about a centimeter, then it's yarn over, insert the hook into the same stitch, pull up a loop, elongate the loop, yarn over, insert the hook into the same stitch, pull up a loop, elongate the loop, yarn over, insert the hook into that same stitch, pull up a loop, elongate the loop. And I've done that four times. Then it's yarn over, pull through all the loops on the hook, and it's a chain one to secure. So my stitch pattern for this round is skip two stitches, one, two, into that third stitch, double crochet. Then go back and into that last skip stitch, work a puff stitch. So it's yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, elongate the loop, yarn over, insert the hook into the same stitch, pull up a loop, elongate the loop, yarn over, insert the hook into that same stitch, pull up a loop, elongate the loop, yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, elongate the loop, yarn over, go through all the loops on the hook and chain one to secure. Then you'll continue on with skip two stitches into the next stitch, double crochet, into that last skip stitch, puff stitch, and then it's a chain one to secure. Now just to um, make you aware of this, if you look at it, when you are skipping your stitches, 
do not skip that stitch there that's right at the puff stitch because that's the stitch that we've actually worked the double crochet into and it's being pulled into the puff stitch so even though it looks like it may be a free stitch it isn't you will have to keep that in mind that that stitch is the one we had worked the double crochet into so you'll skip one two and into that third stitch you'll work your double crochet then into the skipped the last skip stitch and you see we have two stitches in between the last skip stitch the one closest to the double crochet you'll work a puff stitch so you'll continue with the stitch pattern to the end of the round i'm at the end of round four and i've worked those puff stitches i have one stitch to go so to end the round you'll see that there's two stitches above that la that puff that we had started off with into that first stitch there i'll slip stitch to join so now round. before moving on to round five we need to mark off our center back and our center front now before i i move on further i just need you to know that if you count the number of puffs that you have around the yoke it must be an even number and the fact that we had adjusted our stitch count to a multiple of six ensures that we have an even number of puffs around the yoke so i've counted let's just count it that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two so i've got twenty two puffs around this yoke and you should have an even number remember you ha may have more or less depending on the size that you're making now I've marked off the two puffs here you see it um, at my start here start and I've marked off that puff and I've marked off the one on the other side of start that becomes center back and in between those two puffs if you look at it I have for that puff here I've got only two visible stitches one two and I've got my start and above this puff, I've got three visible stitches. One, two, three. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six stitches, including start above for my center back. Now on the opposite side of center back, we have center front. Let me just show you how to get there. So here's the two puffs marking off center back. And if I eliminate puffs, I'll get to my two puffs on the opposite side marking off center front. So here goes. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got here these remaining two puffs those that becomes my center front and in between those two puffs i have six stitches one two three four five six okay so i've marked off my center back on the top here at start and here's my center front and in between i have an equal number of puffs on either side one two three four five six seven eight nine and here on the other side one two three four five six seven eight nine and you should have the same an equal number of puffs on either side then you have your two for center back and your two for center front now we'll move on round five turn chain two one two into those three stitches above the puff and let me tell you that every puff 
above every puff stitch there are three stitches and we'll count them as stitches and we'll be working stitches into those stitches now it's important that you keep your stitch count correct which is in multiples of six uh, in order to get your stitch pattern correct so into those three stitches above the first puff i'll work three double crochets one two three then it skip one stitch into that next stitch double crochet into that skip stitch work a puff stitch so the stitch pattern now is skip two one two into that next stitch double crochet into the last skip stitch work a puff stitch skip two stitches double crochet into that last skip stitch work a puff stitch and you'll continue until you get to those stitch markers marking off the center front I've continued on with my stitch pattern and here I am at center front those two puffs marked off by those two stitch markers so I have one stitch remaining from that last puff before center front so I'll skip that last stitch and into the, the three stitches above that puff marked off by center front I'll work three double crochets so that's one two three so in between these two puffs one two that's marked off I'll work a double crochet so that now becomes my exact center front and I'll mark it off with a stitch marker remembering after this for the yoke i need to replace the stitch marker into the center front stitch throughout the yoke into that next puff i'll work three double crochets one two three And I can now re remove these two stitch markers on either side as I no longer need them. I've got my center front marked off. So now the stitch pattern is skip one stitch into the next stitch, double crochet into that skip stitch. And then my stitch pattern is skip two one two into that next stitch double crochet into the last skip stitch puff stitch and I'll continue on with skip two stitches double crochet into the last skip stitch I'll walk a puff stitch until I get to that puff stitch I seem to have removed the stitch marker that puff stitch at center back I've continued on with the puff stitch pattern and here I am right at that last puff stitch before center back before the start so here it is 
you'll skip the next stitch, the, the last stitch into that puff there. And into the last puff, I have two visible stitches. Remember that that um, chain two counts as my third stitch from that puff. So here goes. I'll skip that stitch and into the next stitch, I'll work a double crochet. So here I want to increase my stitch count here so that I have a definite center back. And this chain two will be my exact center back. So to adjust here, I'll work two stitches into that last stitch. So if you look at it now, I have on the one side of center back, which is my chain two, I have three stitches. And on the other side of center back here, I have three stitches. Now to end the round into the second chain from chain two, slip stitch to join. Round six, turn, chain two. Now, before I go on, let me explain round six, which is an increase round. So for our increase rounds, we'll be working double crochets into all double crochets from the round before. And then we'll work three double crochets into the first puffs on either side of center back one puff and here's another those two puffs we'll work three double crochets into those two stitches here well actually it's going to be six stitches although it's a puff stitch remember there's three stitches above the puff stitch and on the opposite side here center front we'll work three double crochets each into each of these uh, stitches on uh, just before or after center front and all along the sides the remaining puffs on the one side and on the other side we'll work double crochets into all stitches and we'll include 12 increases so it's double crochets plus 12 increases on the side and then it's double crochets plus 12 increases on the other side. So in total for this round, we would have worked 24 increases. So continuing with round six, which is our increase round, three double crochets into these double crochets from the round before. Remember it's double crochets into all double crochets. Into the first puff, we'll work three double crochets into those three stitches above the puff stitch. Into the remaining puff stitches, with the exception of the one right before center front, I will work double crochets into all stitches and I'll include 12 increases. So to work an increase again, it's working two stitches into one and I'll work that into that first stitch. So that's my first increase. Then I'll work a double crochet. Maybe my next increase here. That's my second increase. A double crochet maybe my third increase and so on until I've worked 12 increases into the puff stitches so the, the important thing to remember is here we don't want to work our increases one after the other we want to space them out along these puff stitches just as long as they have one or two stitches in between each increase, that's fine. You may find as you get to the end, and here I am if I'm at the end, and let's say I have 
three increases that I'm short of. That's perfectly fine. Go ahead and work those three increases into the last three stitches, just as long as you are not doing them with all 12 increases. I hope that makes sense. But uh, anyway, space out those increases along those puffs. And then you'll continue with your double crochets and increases until you get to that last puff before center front. I've continued on working those double crochets into the puffs and I've also worked those 12 increases spaced apart along these puff stitches. Now here I am at the last puff before center front. Into that last puff I'll work three double crochets, one, two, three, and then I'll work my three stitches, three double crochets to get to center front. I'll work a double crochet into center front and I'll replace the stitch marker. And then I'll work to three double crochets on the other side of center front to get to that first puff stitch on the other side. So you continue on to that first puff stitch on the other side of center front. I've continued on and I've worked those three uh, double crochets before center front. I then worked my double crochet into center front, replaced the stitch marker, and then it was three double crochets to the first puff stitch on the next side of center front. So into the, that first puff stitch, I will work three double crochets into the three stitches above that first puff. Now, just as we had done for the opposite side of the yoke, where we worked our stitches into these puff stitches, including 12 increases, I will do the same on the side. So it's not necessary to be so precise, like you don't need to do exactly what you did on the other side with regards to how you space the increases. Um, just as long as the increases are not worked directly one after the other. You do want to space them out and have a stitch or two in between those 12 increases. So I'll work my double crochets including and those 12 increases into these remaining puff stitches until I get to that last puff stitch before center back. So it's I'm I'm looking to work increases into these puff stitches all along these puff stitches. So here goes. Maybe I'll work an increase into that first stitch. That's one increase. Then it's just a double crochet and an increase into the next stitch. That was my second increase and I'll work a double crochet and maybe my third increase and so on until you get to that last puff before center back having worked 12 increases. I've completed those double crochets working the 12 increases into the side of the the next side of the yoke. So here I am at that last puff stitch before center back into that the three stitches above that last puff stitch. I'll work three double crochets. That's one, two, three, and then into the remaining three stitches. I'll work three double crochets. That's one, two, three, and you'll see on this side I have six double crochets. That's three into the puff and the three for the 
three remaining stitches then to end the round it's into the second chain from chain two slip stitch to join round seven turn chain two into all stitches work double crochets And you'll continue on with double crochets to the end of the round. I have worked those double crochets all across and I'm at the end of round seven. So to complete the round into that second chain from chain two, slip stitch to join. Then it's turn round eight chain two into the next six stitches work six double crochets so you'll continue on with six double crochets I've continued on and I've worked those six double crochets. So my stitch pattern now is skip two stitches, one, two, into that third stitch, double crochet. Into this last skip stitch, work a puff stitch. And then You'll continue on with skip two, one, two. Then it's a double crochet into that third stitch. Into the skipped last skip stitch, you'll work a puff stitch. And you'll continue on with that stitch pattern until you get to center front and you're looking to get to six stitches before center front. So not counting the stitch marked off, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is where I'll stop with my puff stitch pattern. I've continued on with the stitch pattern and here I am six stitches before center front. So here's center front and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Into those six stitches, I'll work six double crochets. So you'll continue on working those six double crochets, then into center front, you'll work a double crochet and mark off that stitch with the stitch marker. And then on the other side of center front, you'll work six more double crochets into the next six stitches. I've continued on and I've worked the six double crochets. I then worked a double crochet for my center front and I marked it off. I then worked another six double crochets to the other side of center front. Then my stitch pattern is skip two stitches, one, two, into that third stitch, work a double crochet. Into the skipped stitch, work a puff stitch. And you'll continue on with the stitch pattern that skip two double crochet into the next stitch and then it's a puff stitch into the last skip stitch you'll continue on until you get to center back and you're looking to get to six stitches before center back so that's two four six and this is where i'll stop with my stitch pattern I've continued on with the puff stitch pattern and here I am six stitches before the end of the round. So into those six stitches, I'll work six double crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six 
So to end the round, it's into the second chain from chain two, slip stitch to join. Round nine, turn, chain two. Work six double crochets to get to that first puff. Continue on with those double crochets. I've worked those six double crochets and here I am at the first puff. So into that first puff, those three stitches above the first puff, I'll work three double crochets. Then it skip one stitch into that next stitch, work a double crochet. Into that skip stitch, work a puff stitch. So now my stitch pattern is skip two, one, two, into that third stitch, work a double crochet into the last skip stitch work a puff stitch and you'll continue on with skip two one two a double crochet and then a puff stitch into the skip stitch uh, right up until you get to the last puff stitch before center front I've worked the stitch pattern and here I am at that last puff stitch before center front. So into actually I'll skip the next stitch, skip that stitch into those three stitches above the puff stitch. I'll work three double crochets. Then I'll continue on working six double crochets to that center front, working a double crochet into center front and replacing the stitch marker. Then it's six double crochets to the first puff on the other side. Continue on to that first puff on the other side of center front. I've continued on. I've worked those six double crochets to center front. I worked a double crochet into center front and replaced my stitch marker. I then work six double crochets and here I am at that first puff stitch after center front. So into those three stitches above that first puff stitch, I'll work three double crochets. That's one. two and three then i'll skip one stitch skip one and into that next stitch i'll walk a double crochet into that skip stitch i'll walk a puff stitch then for the remaining puff stitches my stitch pattern is skip two here's one two into that stitch i'll work a double crochet into that last skip stitch i'll work a puff stitch and i'll continue on with skip two double crochet puff stitch into the skip stitch until i get to that last puff before center back i've worked the puff stitch pattern and here i am at that last puff right before center back so i'm going to skip this last stitch that comes from that the puff before and into the three stitches above this last puff i'll work three double crochets it's one two three and then i'll continue on 
with six double crochets into the remaining six stitches. Continue to the end of the round. I've continued on and I've worked those six double crochets. So to complete round nine, it's into that second chain from chain two, slip stitch to join. Round 10, turn, chain two. Now for round 10, we're working double crochets into all double crochets from the round before. Then we're working three double crochets each into these puff stitches. So it's the two puff stitches right next to center back. And it's those two puff stitches right next to center front on the other side. So into those puff, four puff stitches, you'll work three double crochets into those stitches above the puff stitches. But for the remaining puffs on either side of the yoke, we will work double crochets into all stitches. At the same time, we'll work 12 increases. So it's double crochets plus 12 increases on the side. And then it's double crochets plus 12 increases on that side. So in total, we would have worked 24 increases for round 10. So then I'm going to double crochet into all these double crochets from the round before. And you'll continue until you get to that first puff. Here I am, I've worked double crochets into all the double crochets from the round before. And I'm at that first puff before, sorry, after center back. So into those three stitches above that first puff, I'll work double crochets. Into the remaining puffs. With the exception of the last puff, I will work double crochets plus 12 increases. So I'm going to work double crochets into each of these stitches above the puff and I'm going to include 12 increases. So let's go about that. So maybe I'll work an increase into that first stitch. So an increase is working two stitches into one. So that was one, then I'll work a double crochet, just a plain stitch. Then maybe I'll work another increase, that's my second increase. I'll work a double crochet. Maybe I'll work my third increase here. And so on. The thing to remember is that you cannot work your increases, all 12 increases consecutively. So one after the other, you cannot work those increases. You need to space them out into the remaining puffs with the exception of the last puff. So maybe you will work two double crochets before working an increase. That's perfectly fine. Um, as you get to the end, should you be like short, like maybe I've got three stitches, but I need to work two increases in order to get those 12 increases, then it's fine. Go ahead and work the increase one after the other. But just as long as you're not working all 12 increases straight one after the other, and you are spacing them out um, among these puff stitches. So you'll continue to the last puff. So I've continued on and I've worked double crochets into the stitches above the puff, puffs, in, including the 12 increases. 
and here I am at that last puff before center front so into that last puff I'll work three stitches three double crochets and then I'll continue on with double crochets to center front work a double crochet into center front replace the stitch marker continuing on with double crochets to that first puff on the other side I've continued on after that puff stitch right here at before center front and I've worked double crochets into all the stitches, the double crochets from the round before. I've also replaced my stitch marker into that center front. I continued on with double crochets and here I am at the puff on the other side of center front, the first puff. So into that three stitches above that first puff, I'll work three double crochets. And then into the remaining puff stitches with the exception of the one right at the end here, I'll work my double crochets into the three stitches but I'll include 12 increases as I work along. Remember to space out those increases. You may work an increase here into one stitch and then just work a double crochet into the next and increase into the next. A double crochet into the next and increase into the next and so on until you get to that last puff stitch there may be times where you may have to work an increase especially when once you get to the end to work an increase right next to each other and that's perfectly fine just as long as you're not working all 12 increases one after the other so you'll continue with double crochets and increases to that last puff here i am at the last puff stitch before center back so into that puff stitch, into those three stitches above the puff stitch, I'll work three double crochets. And then I'll continue on with double crochets to the end of the round. I've worked my way to the end of round 10. Into the second chain from chain two, slip stitch to join. Round seven, turn. Then it's chain two, one, two. And here we're working double crochets into all stitches. So you'll continue on with double crochets to the end of the round. I'm at the end of round 11 and I've worked those double crochets all across to end the round into that second chain from chain two slip stitch to join. Then it's turn, chain, round 12, chain two, one, two. Then it's work 12 DC double crochets into the next 12 stitches. So that's one, two, three, and you'll continue working to 12 double crochets. I've continued on and I've worked those 12 double crochets. So my stitch pattern is skip two, one, two, and into that third stitch, double crochet. Then into that skipped, last skip stitch, work a puff stitch. So 
So my stitch pattern is skip two, one, two, into that third stitch, double crochet, go back into the skip stitch, walk a puff stitch, and then you'll continue until you get to the center front, but you're looking to work that pattern to 12 stitches before that stitch marker. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. And this is where I'll stop with my puff stitch pattern. I've continued on with the puff stitch pattern and I have 12 stitches to go before I get to center front. So if you count it, that's remember excluding the stitch that's marked off it's one two four six eight ten twelve into those twelve stitches i'll work double crochets So I'll continue on with double crochets, working those 12 double crochets to center front. I'll then work a double crochet into center front, replace the stitch marker, and then I'll work 12 more double crochets after center front. And continue with my stitch pattern. I've continued on. I've worked the 12 double crochets to center front. I then worked a double crochet into center front and replaced the stitch marker. I then worked 12 double crochets after center front. Then it's skip two stitches, one, two, into that third stitch, double crochet, Go back into that last skip stitch and work a puff stitch. So my stitch pattern is skip two stitches into the third stitch, double crochet. Go back into that skip stitch and work a puff stitch. And you'll continue with this stitch pattern until you get to center back and you're working to 12 stitches before center back so if you count two four six eight ten twelve this is where i should stop with my puff stitch pattern i've continued on here i am right at the end of round 12 and I have 12 stitches to go so if you look at it that's 2 4 6 8 10 12 into those 12 stitches I'll work 12 double crochets continue to the end of the round I've continued on working those 12 double crochets to complete round 12. Here I am at the end into that second chain from chain two, slip stitch to join. Round 13, turn, chain two. Then you work 12 double crochets into these 12 stitches from the round before. I've worked those double crochets, 12 double crochets, and here I am at that first puff after center back. So into that first puff, I'll work three double crochets. One, two, three. Then it's skip one stitch. Here's one stitch into that next stitch. Work a double crochet. 
Go back into that skip stitch and walk a puff stitch. Then it's the stitch pattern is skip two, one, two, into that stitch, walk a double crochet. Go back into that skip stitch and walk a puff stitch. And you'll continue with skip two, one, two, a double crochet into the skip stitch, stitch, go back and work a puff stitch. You'll continue with that stitch pattern right up to until you get to that last puff stitch before center front. So I'll skip the one stitch and into that puff, the three stitches above the puff, I'll work three double crochets. So that's one, two, three. I've continued on and I've worked the 12 double crochets to the center front. I worked a double crochet into that stitch marked by the stitch marker. And then I worked 12 double crochets to the other side of center front. And here I am at that first puff. So into that first puff, the three stitches above that first puff, I'll work three double crochets. It's one, two, three. Then it's skip one stitch into that next stitch. I'll work a double crochet. I'll go back into that skip stitch and work a puff stitch. Then I'll skip the next two stitches, one, two, and into that stitch here, I'll work a double crochet. Into the last skip stitch, which is the one right next to the double crochet, I'll work a puff stitch. So my stitch pattern is skip two, that's one, two, into the stitch, work a double crochet. Into the last skip stitch, work a puff stitch. And you continue on with that stitch pattern until you get to the last puff stitch before center back. So here it is. I'll actually stop right here leaving out this last puff stitch. I've continued on working those puff stitches and here I am right at the last puff before my center back. So I'll skip the one stitch and into that puff, the three stitches above the puff, I'll work three double crochets. So that's one, two, three. Then it's 12 double crochets to the end of the round. And if you look, I've got 12 stitches remaining, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Into those 12 stitches, I'll work double crochets to the end of the round. So once you get to the end, you will slip stitch into the second chain from chain two 
to join. I've completed round 13. I slip stitched into the second chain from chain two to join. Now, before I move on to the body, you will stop at round 13 for a size extra small and small. And thereafter, you continue to the body. But if you're working um, a size medium, large and extra large, you work a repeat of round six, that increase round, and then a repeat of round seven. And then you'll work round 16 and round 17. So round 16 is the same. It's always the same. It's just that as we work along with with regard to the repeat of the puff stitch rounds, we're increasing the number of stitches in between. So for round 16, I'll have 15 double crochets in between. And for round 17, I'll have 18 double crochets in between. I will give you the pattern. You'll find it in the next clip. Um, it will be a written pattern to follow along. You just have to keep in mind that it's the same. The pattern is the same. It's just that for every round of these, these puff stitch repeats, we're increasing the number of double cro crochets we work in between. So then for, for a size medium and a large, large and extra large you'll stop at round 17 and then continue on to the body then for rounds 2xl 3xl 4xl and 5xl you'll work round 18 and round 19 which is going to be a repeat of round 6 that increase round and round 7 and then you'll work round 20 and round 21. Again, it's the same. The pattern will continue, but only this time you'll have for round nine, um, sorry, 20, you'll have 21 double crochets to work with. And then for round 21, you'll have 24 double crochets. And then once you've done with round 21, you'll stop and continue on with the body. So um, should you at any point feel that you'd like a little bit more length under once you reach that armhole depth, once you get to the armholes, um, you can work round 22 and or round 23, which is just a round of chain two, turn, double crochets all around, slip stitch to, to join. And that's only to lengthen on the yoke. Now, if you work round 22 and or, and or round 23, you will skip round two and round and or round three of the sleeves because then you'll just be working extra rounds of double crochet and you will sort of go off with the flow of the pattern. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. But like I said, in the next clip, I will have the pattern written down. You can pause and you can go through the pattern and work your the rest of the yoke for those sizes. I'll, I'll be just stopping here because I'm working a size small. We'll now mark out the armholes before moving on to the body. Now I'll provide those measurements in the next clip. You need to take that measurement, the armhole measurement, and divide it by two. And the reason for it is because there is a fold here that you see along the edge. So when you measure, you measure half the measurement and then there's your next half of the measurement. So the armhole measurement for a size small is 10 inches. 10 inches divided by two is five inches. And with my yoke folded, 
and laid out flat. Here's my center front and my center back. And along the sides of the yoke, I'll measure my armholes. Here's it, five inches, and I'll place a stitch marker on both the layers. And I've done the same on the other side, measuring out the armhole. Five inches, and here's my two stitch markers. So you will do the same for the size that you are making. Let's continue on to the body of the sweater. Round one of the body, chain one and turn. Work single crochets to that first stitch marker, marking off the armhole. I've continued on with those single crochets and here I am at that first stitch marker marking off the armhole space. Then it's chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I suggest that you keep your your stitches for this chain rather loose because I find that it's a lot easier when I'm working um, round two to work my stitches into these little bumps that you see at the back of the chain right here. And if you look, here's your, the front of the chain and here's the back of the chain. Like I like to work it into those little bumps because then when I'm working the sleeves, I have um, a clear stitch to work with. It just forms a clear stitch and it's much easier to work with. But that's just my preference. You work it the way you'd like to. Um, then it's skip the stitches in between stitch marker one and stitch marker two. And here join to stitch marker two with a single crochet. And here you have our first armhole space. Then it's single crochet to stitch marker three. I've continued on along the front with those single crochets. Here I am at stitch marker three. Then it's chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now let me tell you that this chain, the number of chains is completely optional. Chain as many or as less as, you, as you'd like with um, always remembering that the longer the chain, the looser the fit on the body and the sleeves and the shorter the chain, the tighter the fit on the body and the sleeves. Then it skip the stitches in between stitch marker three and stitch marker four and join to stitch marker four with a single crochet. And here you have our second armhole space. Then it's continue with single crochets to the end of the round. I'm at the end of round one of the body and to complete the round into that chain one that we had started off with slip stitch to join round two chain two and turn here we working double crochets all around the body and we will work those double crochets into this chain as well that's under the armhole spaces always turn after every round it keeps that that joining line straight running straight along the back
So I've worked those double crochets and here I am at that first chain. Now, like I said, I prefer working my um, stitches into these little bumps that you see along the back of the chain. Here's the front of the chain and here's the back of the chain. So you may just have to need to help your um, stitches along as you go because it does get a little tight. Uh, these little bumps here. So into that little bump at the back, I'll work my stitches. That was one. And because I've worked five chains, I need to work five stitches. That's two. three, four, and five. And then you'll continue on with double crochets to that next chain where you work it in the same manner and then it's double crochets to the end and you can slip stitch into the second chain from chain two to join. So you'll see here I have like clear stitches when I'm working my sleeves I'll be able to work them easily into those stitches. I've continued on with the body and all I've done was repeat round two which was those rounds of double crochets to the length that I needed my sweater at. So I fastened off and here I am attaching yarn to the center back. I'm now going to work the ribbing. So remember you're using your smaller of the two hooks. In my case it's the five millimeter hook. You will attach yarn to that center back and then it's chain six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now this chain six, it's um, optional. You can, it all depends on the, the width of the ribbing that you're looking for. Um, the longer you go on the chain, the wider the ribbing. Okay, so round one into that second chain from the hook, single crochet. Single crochet into the remaining chains. Now I've chained six, so I should have five stitches and one, two, three, four, five. So your stitch count should be one less than the number of chains that you've chained. And remember at every round, you need to make sure that your stitch count remains the same. Okay, so to attach the ribbing onto the body, it's into those one, two stitches from the body. We will slip stitch, slip stitch into those. So insert your yarn into that first stitch, pull up a loop and go through the one on the hook. And here's my second slip stitch. And the rubbing's attached. Round two, turn. Now remember those first two stitches, one, two that you see, those are from the slip stitching. You work, make sure you work your first stitch into the right stitch from the ribbing. So here's my first stitch. And if I count one, two, three, four, five, and that's the right amount of stitches I should have. So into that first stitch, single crochet. Continue with single crochets to the end of the round. And yes, you're working your stitches into the back loops only. Round two, 
round three, chain one and turn. Now that chain one counts as a turning chain, so you'll ignore it. And into that first stitch here, you'll work your single crochet, crochets going down to complete the round, working those single crochets into the back loops only. And then it's two slip stitches into the body. That was one and two. So I'll continue on repeating round two and three until I come to the end again. I've continued on with the ribbing along the bottom edge of the body. And all I've done was repeat those two rounds, round two and round three. So here I am, and you'll see that this part of the ribbing meets the, the start of the ribbing. And once you've got that, you can slip stitch all the way to join these two ends together. So to slip stitch, well, it all depends on which way you're working. So you may be working just as I am working, going down the ribbing, um, or you may be working, going, working up the ribbing. And that all depends on which round you stopped at. It doesn't really matter because in both cases you would do the same. You bring the two ends together and just as we had done for the uh, ribbing at the neckline, you um, match stitch for stitch, bring it together and you'll slip stitch going through those stitches. And you continue to the end of the ribbing. Uh. Now I've continued on with those slip stitches and I'm at the end. I fastened off and I can cut off this excess yarn. We'll now work the sleeves and to do that here's the, the armhole space and here I am attaching yarn to the underarm of the armhole space. So before continuing you need to count the number of stitches that you have around this armhole space. And in this round that we're working, round one of the sleeve, you need to pick up that stitch count to a multiple of six. So here we're working single crochets. So that's chain one. And you can single crochet all around the armhole space. However, you will have to increase to pick up your stitch count to a multiple of six now i have 34 um stitches so i'll need to work two stitches to bring it to a multiple of six and to work the, that increase it's just working two stitches into one so you work two single crochets into one stitch to increase continue to the end of the round at the end slip stitch to join i've continued on with the sleeve and i've completed that first round of single crochets picking up my stitch count to a multiple of six i then work two rounds of double crochet chaining two turn double crochet all the way around and slip stitch to join so that was two rounds i then worked um, a repeat of round four and round five just as i had done for the yoke and as you can see i continued on with that that sequence two rounds of double crochet and then it was a repeat of round four and round five from the yoke until i got to the length that i needed it at being and then there's the um, where you can sort of flare out the sleeve at the end. Now this flare, it measures 
it's actually the last four rounds of the sleeve. So if I take that measurement, it's three inches or eight centimeters. Now you'd have to work the sleeve to about three inches or eight centimeters less than the required length. And then you'll work the last four rounds. But when you get to the round of double crochets, the first round of double crochets, you will increase your stitch count by 12. So that means all around this, this round, you work 12 increases. And then it's a round of double crochets and two rounds of puffs. And then for my last round, I single crochet into all the stitches just to complete it off. You can then fasten off and um, cut off the excess yarn and you'll repeat the same for the other sleeve and that's it weave in all the ends and you're done thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this tutorial